welcome to October's edition of Watch Me Suck at Bowling, coming to you from Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts, or as the locals love to call it, Haverhill. Yep, we're here again. A lot of people liked this place, so we're back. And it was close to work, well, sort of. Big, we've seen it all before. There's a video showing what's inside. Biggest bowling alley of any kind that I've been in, 48 lanes. So let's go inside and situate ourselves. While everything is being packed up and brought into the bowling alley, let's look at the high scores as of now. In the land of candle pins, we got a high of 139. Oddly enough, knowing that I play worse with people, it was during a competition tryout at Putnam Street Lanes in Fitchburg. While beginning to bowl the right way, I got the 44 at Mason's. In the land of the ducks, got a high of 147 at Collins Bolodrome, which is the tougher of the two places that I can visit. The other one being North Chumford's Lanes, which is not bad at all either. The low happened in Chelmsford, the 58. And that's because I had the pin cam in the lane and there was almost no approach whatsoever. Moved the camera, everything went better. Then the bowling everybody is familiar with. My high is a pathetic 160, just barely above average ability. I tied it at Gardner 10 pins fairly recently in the last impromptu. And oddly enough, the 160 was achieved in Wichita, Massachusetts at the Playaway, the toughest house that I've been in for 10 pin. Then trying to do the Belmo thing, it didn't work. And that's where my, yes, that's a real number, low of 26 happened. And those are the highs and lows as of now. Watch Me Suck at Bowling is a proud sponsor of the hit TV candle pin show, King of the Palace. Watch talented professional and league bowlers show their stuff instead of watching this crap. To watch episodes of King of the Palace, simply go to YouTube and search for King of the Palace. If you want to subscribe to the show, go to youtube.com slash new palace lanes. We will be bowling on lane number 40. And if you recall when we were here before, we bowled on that one, number 41. The one that had the pin plate that was slightly crooked to the right. So everything rolled to the right. Helped with the score. And I got my favorite, the semi-automatic. And if you remember last time, and yeah, this camera's still doing it. For some reason, it's making black lines where they really don't exist. And, of course, the only thing professional you'll see about this bowling are the Epco Urethane Pro-Life Balls. And so, with that being said, it's now time for those most famous words you've been waiting for and might not possibly mean anything. It's now time to watch me suck at bowling. Game one, ball one. Remember, now that the ball goes fast enough, the pin cam is off to the side. Plus, it makes it easier to count the pins anyway. Ball two. Ball three. I'll admit, ball two is pretty good. No good. It went in the gutter. That's a nine. For those of you who like the pin setters, here's the bowl more in action, and I forget the button is way off in Never Never Land. Ball 
three. Ten. So far, not a bad start. We got a nine and one, and then the ten at two. So far, we are at 19. Frame three, ball one. Ball two. Ball three. Frame four, ball one. Ball two, you knew either the ball one seven pin or ball one ten pin was going to happen. Ball three. This place seems a lot tougher than last. I think they forgot to put some treatment on the deck. Steadily going downhill with seven. Things have gone downhill, but not too badly. We got a respectable eight and three, and then the seven and four. 34, so far, still not too bad. Frame five, ball one. Ball two. Three, another good try that just didn't work. Niner. Frame six, ball one. Ball three. Niner again. That's better than the previous two. We got a pair of nines in five and six. We are at fifty two. It still looks like it's going to be a halfway decent game. Will it continue? Frame 7, ball 1. In spite of no marks, this could be a halfway decent game. Ball 2. Another eight. Frame eight ball one. Ball two. three. This could be the worst frame in a game like this. Eh. And it is the worst one, a six. Those two frames weren't the best performance. 
We got a decent eight and seven, and then a six and eight. If that's the lowest number, that ain't too bad. 66, good game is still possible. Let's see how it ends. Frame nine ball number 14 to make minimum average ability. Too. This place was stupid easy last time. Now it's almost like Mason's. Ball three. Someone else is taking their shot. for a good game. Another six. Last frame, ball one. I need an eight or better. Ball two. Bear is better than an eight. El Stinko, the bonus ball. Eight of them will get us nine. El Stinko with a slightly stinky leave, but we end with a six fill. The final frame saved that one. Once again, we got a pathetic six and nine. And then we got a spare in 10 and El Stinko gave us a six to boost the score up to a decent 88. Looks like this is gonna be a very tough place to score. It was stupid easy last time. I guess they decided to change which side was easy. Cause even on Candlepin New Gen, when they were here initially, when they were playing on the red side, you could see the pins would fall over just simply by looking at them. But considering how hard it is, 88, not so bad. That will wrap up this edition of Watch Me Suck It Bowling for the first week of November 2018. From Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts, this is George F551 saying hope you enjoyed and have a good one.